Hi everyone and welcome back to the HWBOT World Series 2016. This is the final for the uh, Extreme Overclocker in this World Series Championship. That is the first qualifier of the year and we will see the first match to start in the next few minutes. We had a slight technical issue right here uh, on the show and I will be joined, now it's, uh, it's fixed, and I'm joined here to comment with Dan Kopp from Germany. Hey Dan Kopp, how are you doing? Hey, I'm fine, Truth. Perfect. I hope you're doing fine. Yeah, everything is fine except the, the slight technical issue. As some people said on the live chat, it's always like this when you want to do, uh, want to, when you want to bench. Everything is ready and when you change something and just you move and it's gone forever. So let's jump to uh, the, uh, you can see on the screen, the two overclockers. We have on the left, Joe90BR and on the right, we have Clinton Schenkel, ASC Schenk. And they will be competing today on Edge uh, on W Prime 32M. Let's go back to the communication with our judge on the other side, Timote. Hey, Timote, can oh, you hear man. us? Thanks, Drew, for the upgrade. I'm not judge yet, but ah, maybe yeah, one no. day. <laughs> part part <laughs> one of the crew. One day I will be. So we are, we are ready here. So um, I guess the two overclockers have their system ready, booted up. Uh, they are both in uh, positive temperatures, so it's pretty much good to go. So Everything let's is ready, ma Peter? All right. Let's make sure that th this will uh, start as they have, they have 30 minutes to do uh, the best they can on their system and you will be able to see all the details live. This is what it looks like. On the left side of the big screen you have Joe90BR and on the right side of the big screen you have Clayton Schenkel. They will both be ready to fight in this game. Let's make sure that everything is as expected. We're almost ready to go in the next <laughs> few seconds. A few more click clicks. <laughs> Timote, yes. are, you, are the overclockers ready? Yes, the overclockers are ready, Truffman. So we can launch this first match of we can launch this first match of the HWBOT World Series for the Extreme in three, two, one now. So starting from now, they have 30 minutes, and you can see they go straight uh, straight on the liquid nitrogen. They have 30 minutes to do the best score at W Prime 32M. Dan Cup, what do you expect to happen in the next 30 minutes? Yeah, they. I, I think they will do some safe scores just to have a score, uh, which is much better than no score. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I think that 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 will be the start. Um, you can do something around five gigahertz, I think, at the temperature by uh, nil degrees, and afterwards, I think they they're gonna raise the CPU clocks as much as they can. So let's go straight to it. This is the Schenkel, uh, Clayton Schenkel uh, space uh, screen, and he's actually back in the BIOS straight from the start. And they are uh, changing all their uh, few systems, uh, inf system information. On the other side, now we have uh, Joe9TBR that is already setting up some of his settings for the memory. I don't know, I, that's the graphic so far, and I don't know what they will be um, going for in the first time. Um, Dan Cup, what will be your strategy to reach the best W Prime 32M uh, score on a CPU that you don't know and you haven't tried before? Uh. As I've said before, I, I would do some safe scores first. So uh, you see, Joe BR is uh, setting up to five gigahertz. So that's that's pretty safe, and uh, I think one hundred percent of the CPUs could do it. So uh, and afterwards, just raising the uh, multiplier in the OS until it stops, and then maybe playing a bit with the voltages um, if it helps. And yeah, then just see uh, what's possible within thirty minutes. So it's it's very very hard and tough. Yeah, it's especially be because the, the the CPU they're using the forty seven seventy K the Core i seven from Intel and they haven't tried this CPU before. Like these CPU are brand new for the other guys, so they have to to test it and find out what is the best score they can get from it. Yeah, that makes it uh, makes it uh, much more uh, uh, difficult, I think. Um, just not not knowing a CPU where where the cold bug is where. The limits are for for voltages and so on. Yeah, that so would be quite we'll interesting see. to see. Yeah, that would be quite interesting to see. Joe Ninety BR is now restarting the system. Same for uh, Clayton Schinkel that is uh, actually uh, in the process of restarting his setup. 
I was not sure it was working uh, okay, but I just saw in front of us the screen to light up. Because we are, I am actually in the back of these guys, so I can see their screen as well as you guys right now. So this is it, Clayton is already on the system, is already uh, launching the WPRAM32M benchmark. This benchmark will take just a few seconds to complete and we will see what are the kind of score they can achieve with that. Oh, there was a blue screen on Joe 90 BR. He had to, uh, he had to restart. Sadly, we didn't uh, catch that, catch that live. Let us know, guys, on the live chat who you are cheering from. Is that for Joe 90 BR or AS Shank? Uh, first score: 24 seconds, 0.569, and the CPU frequency so far is at 4.7 gigahertz. A lot of room right there. They have a lot of space and uh, and, and and for improvements uh, for this. Dankov, what do you think about that first score? Uh, yeah, now 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 we see uh, uh, what happened. Um, w prime usually uh, counts with with one core when you just started. You you have to set W prime to. Uh, eight cores. If you if you can use four cores with hyper threading, and that's and exactly what that's that's exactly what Clinton just did. He, he was running on yeah. only one thread, and now he's, he put eight thread, and he's at four point nine five two seconds. This is uh, this is the yes. first real score of the of the uh, of the competition now, and he's uh, adjusting some of the frequency directly inside Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's doing that, and um, he knows that he can do much better. Because um, he doesn't even do any uh, screenshot right now, so um, he knows he's not at the end. There's uh, not really? much need to do the screenshot because the score is updated live by uh, ah. Peter, and uh, 4.93 is the scoreboard. We'll go back to the scoreboard quite a few times. Only the final score will be written in uh, the below in the in the title below. So let's go back to uh, Clayton. He's modifying some of the settings. He's at 4.93 seconds at the moment. If they will keep on benching exactly at the same uh, location of the screen, I will actually be able to uh, get it in the bigger, uh, bigger things with you. Let's switch to uh, the screen of our friend Joe90BR. It was actually just benching uh, before. The GTL 2.0, the Gigabyte Tweak Launcher is a software they can use to change some of the settings in the, uh, during Windows for the system and is right now at 5 gigahertz, actually 4.9998. So we'll be changing a few settings. They are already at the, v, uh, at the voltage of 1.85 volts, so this is already quite high. But don't forget, these guys are using liquid nitrogen. This is uh, quite, uh, that's going to be quite impressive. Let's see the score of the W'32M. 4.56 seconds. He's taking the lead in this uh, first, um, first round against Schenkel that have 4.90 seconds so far. I think he will be uh, continuing to push that on, on the, as much as he can. Dan Cobb, would you do the same if you were pushing actually the, uh, the, the settings one by one without crashing and not lose any time? Yeah, sure, sure, exactly the same. Uh, they do it uh, perfect. I mean, uh, they, they are pushing the system on still, uh, un until they get a blue screen. So uh, you can't do better in such a short time. So that is really important for them to not crash and not have to restart, reset the BIOS and uh, uh, do all this, the settings in the BIOS before going back uh, on, on the system. They lose so much time otherwise. Let's switch back to... And it's a blue screen! The first blue screen we can see on the live for this competition. This, uh, this is what one. happened. <laughs> I know, Dan Cup, you really want to yell, this is a blue screen. I really yeah, want... Yeah, but you, I really you were really faster. <laughs> So as you can see, there's uh, a lot of action right there. Uh, Schenkel just went back into the system and launching straight up. He's going to the settings, adjusting the number of threads. So the number of threads is actually the number of core, uh, lo logical core, and the 4770K from uh, Intel have four physical core, but they have hyper-trading, so that's actually double the number. It's right. actually at 4.587 seconds. That is improving his score as well. As we have right now, this is getting to it. it's very, very close. Um, Clayton is at 4.58, while Joe 90 is at 4.56. Um, it's tight right now. 
It's super tight and that will be made in super tight for the rest of the final. Dan Kopp, uh, I will let you comment on the next uh, few score. That would be fun. Yeah, uh, now no, uh, I think nothing changed right now. Um, yeah, 5.8 as well. Yeah, 4 let's see what he, Okay, he's, he's rebooting. I think uh, right now he's uh, changing the um, uh, input voltage because it's much better to um, uh, change the input voltage in BIOS than in the OS. That is actually what um, uh, Clayton is doing, is adjusting the memory setting as well. Ah, okay. okay. We are back yeah, to... Uh, this is uh, the screen from our friend Joe9TBR. You can see that is 1.85 volt for the VRN. The VCore is at 1.6. 1.6. Don't forget, guys, they're using liquid nitrogen, so this is quite uh, okay voltage for them. Don't have the complete temperature so far, but we know that this is super cold. A lot, a lot, a lot of uh, tension here. They have a little bit more than 20 minutes left in this round. They both already have a score. Dan Kopp, you know, you yourself know that that is extremely important to always submit every score that you have because you need to have at least a score on the scoreboard. Yes, yes, that's very important. And uh, I think you can see right now in this picture, uh, these guys are very, very concentrated. Um, yeah, uh, I think they are pretty happy to, to have a score. And now they, they are working up with the uh, CPU clocks. So... Yeah, let's see some, some screens of them. So Schenkel <coughs> is back in Windows, he's setting the Encore at 51. And yeah, the voltage so far, the VCC in is at 2.1, the VCore is at 1.5. Do you think that that, that could be uh, quite interesting to see the, the results? Because this benchmark is super speedy, super fast. Yeah, it is. And it's the new score, 4.4. 4. 4. 477 seconds is actually uh, passing in front. Uh, it's not uh, passing, it's improved. Yeah, he's actually getting first on the ranking 4.47. And the score are going crazy. And uh, actually, Massman, the judge, is uh, need to adjust the score all the time. Jonah and TBR got a better score at 4.45 as well. Wow. I think we have a new leader. Great. <laughs> Now, now and, we are, we are and we have a second blue screen on the live for the next for just a few seconds, but that was a blue screen from Joe90BR. So they oh, are now <laughs> they are now both rebooting into the system, just making sure that everything is all right. As you can see, they are quite um, quite close in time together. Schenkel is still rebooting. Joe90BR is already inside Windows, trying to set up the vCore. 1.62 volts while the VCC in is at 1.85 that's a different strategy rather than uh, Clayton Clayton is actually uh, does actually use a high VCC in and a lower V core than John TBR what would be your uh, recommendation uh, on that Dan Cup? at the higher VCC in because uh, on Haswell it's uh, pretty important because the uh, internal voltage regulation um, is supported by the VCC in so if you use some Blue high voltages screen. <laughs> yeah. So the VCC yeah. in is really important. Yeah, it's it's really important because uh, the voltage uh, regulation, uh, the internal voltage re regulation from Intel, um, is supported from the from the VCC. And so if you use a very high uh, VSSA, uh, a very high V core, very high uh, DRAM voltage, um, then you need a pretty high VCC in. So it's important. Uh, let us know, guys, on the live chat who you are cheering for in the next 18 minutes. 18 minutes left in this first round of the uh, final for the extreme guys at here, the Edge of the World Series 2016 Latin America final. True. So. Here, you can, here you can see uh, those guys are, are pros, definitely, because uh, we are talking about uh, 12 minutes. They have the system on code, and now we have 5.5 gigahertz here at JoBR, and I think it's a new lead, right? It's a new uh, lead right here. Jonah yes. here is at 4.35 point. This is getting super, super tough for Clayton Schenkel to come back, but we are still not even halfway 
to this first round. And a second blue screen from Joe 90 VR. We like to catch this blue screen on the live. <laughs> it's going quite well. You can see that the two guys are quite uh, concentrated or stressed. In the middle, you can see uh, on the right side, the Massman Peter from HWBot, then Yuri from Hyperx checking for the time, and uh, one uh, of the uh, Schenkel brother on the, uh, on the side. So these two overclockers are uh, extreme overclockers. They know what they are doing and they have a lot of knowledge on, uh, on all these uh, systems. So now we see uh, Joe back in OS and adjusting some uh, voltages. I, if I see it right, he's at uh, 1.69 volts on the uh, CPU right now. That is uh, quite high, but there's some, still some margin to go uh, in for that. Is at 1.9 VCC in, and it seems that it crashed completely. It didn't even went blue screen; it just crashed right away. At the at this very moment, both of the overclockers are rebooting. This is uh, Clayton going into the BIOS. I will so get Clayton. Uh, yep. Clayton is booting uh, at 5.3 gigahertz already, so I think he's uh, right before getting the lead again. But no signal. Here you can see Joe uh, <coughs> heating up the pot with a torch. Uh, that's that's the thing you have to do when you have the pot too cold for the CPU to boot. It's called a uh, cold boot back. And now he's just heating up to a certain temperature, just that the CPU is able to boot again. Oh, my microphone was on mute. This is not quite easy to uh, to do that. So why are they using the torch to heat up the, the CPU? But what happens when it's getting too cold then, Cop? Yeah, my, if it's too cold and you have a cold start on your uh, uh, PC, so uh, that, that means the PC totally shut down, um, then you have a cold boot back if the CPU is too cold. And he's heating up the CPU right now just to see where the temperature is, uh, where it boots again. Perfect, and he's, uh, they have to eat up this. This is although a precious seconds that they can they can lose in this uh, in this competition because 30 minutes of the round, there's we are halfway through. There's less than 15 minutes left now, and they have to restart. So if we go back to uh, the screen of Jaime Joe 90 BR, you can see that it, this is just going back to life. During that time, Clayton is actually going crazy on the BIOS settings, and is changing a lot of them. You can see VCC in is at 2.1, is increasing the vCore 1.55. The CPU ring voltage will be set at 1.37. Oh, it's increasing still the VCC in at 2.2 volts now. Let's push that, push, push more, push more. Yeah, push it, keep pushing. Keep that's, pushing that's it. Good. I mean, all, all depends on the temperature he's at now. Um, it did set up the ring voltage at 1.4 volts. Um, how does that mean for you, Tenkov? Oh, sorry, I didn't get you. He, he, he put the VCC, uh, the voltage for the ring volt, um, the voltage for the V ring at 1.4 volts. Do you think that's going to be close to the limit for him? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. I, I think there's uh, a bit more in it because. You can raise it to uh, like 1.6, I think, depends on how good the CPU is. But we'll see. We still have 30 minutes left. So this is the screen of Joe90BR and is ready to bench big time. And there's a new lead, yeah, 4.419. Right one. Let's have a look at his set settings. It is 5.3 and 4 on the cache. Now he's playing with the base clock. He's currently finding the limits. This 
It's going to be very interesting to see the final score of these guys. So far, we have uh, Clayton Schinkel at 4.477 and Joe Nantibior at 4.35 seconds in this benchmark. W Prime 32M. There is less than 13 minutes left in this first face-off. But uh, the blue screen are still appearing for Joe Nantibior and the reboot are still going on for Clayton. This is a tough game. This is a tough game here. Uh, there's a lot of crowd in uh, in front of the guys, as you can see. There's, uh, this is driving a lot of people around here to uh, to see what they are doing. Some of the guys here are aware from the workshop as well, and they're really crazy to see what's uh, what's going on with the liquid nitrogen. Yeah, when you see it the first time, it's very interesting. I mean, <laughs> there's someone uh, pouring. Uh, some humid stuff into the computer, which is very weird if you don't know what they do. And this is uh, this is actually fun. It's been 15 years I'm seeing these guys doing it, and I still enjoy that so far. Yeah, it's my passion. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it, guys. This is the HWBot World Series Latin America Final. Uh, these guys are competing to win an awesome prize to win a ticket to the world final of the HWBot World Series to happen in Germany at the KS King Bootcamp in December. Don't forget that we have some awesome partners for this event. We have Seasonic that is providing PSU for the complete World Tour Series. And for this event here in Latin America, we are teaming up with Iprex and Gigabyte for the hardware. That means the contestant for the final need to use the Seasonic PSU that is uh, provided to them. They need to use IAPRX memory that they can uh, source themselves. And they need to use a Gigabyte motherboard that they can source themselves as well. So this is quite interesting to see this partner in the game. Don't forget that we also have some media partner. We have Overclock.net, Techmundo, that is the, one of the biggest websites here in Brazil. Overclock.net, that is, if not the biggest... And there's uh, a blue screen. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got one. Yeah, it was faster. <laughs> nice overclock.net, that is uh, most probably the biggest overclocking forum on the planet. Uh, and of course, overclocking TV. This is us right here doing the live casting for this uh, event. And we will be doing all the casting for the all the world tour. And if you want to know more about the world tour and if this is going to happen in your country or your continent, you can go on hwbot.org or overclocking-tv.com. This is uh, Jonah and TBR going back into the BIOS. During that time, Schenkel, Clayton Schenkel is actually waiting for this system to restart. Maybe there is a call bug. We don't know. Joe 90BR on the screen right now, touching some of the settings. The CPU VR in load line calibration set to extreme. These guys are extreme, of course. Changing a little bit of the voltage for the boot up of the memory. So basically, these guys are looking for the extreme settings in the BIOS. Dan Cop, are you doing the same when you are at home? Yeah, yeah, sure. But everything sure. to uh, extreme. Everything to extreme and, and the highest uh, figures you can get. So, <laughs> yeah. If it's not uh, turning red in the BIOS, it's not high enough. Yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, except for uh, Vcore and and some other voltages, sure. But um, yeah, I usually say if it scales, it scales, and when it dies, it dies. <laughs> that that's one way to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's some discussion on the live chat. Thank you guys for tuning in. And if you have any question about what this is what is happening right now, let us know on the live chat. There is Nooks in it that is uh, actually uh, saying RQL not less or equal is the most familiar BSOD. Yes, indeed, this is the most familiar one, and this is the saddest one as well. I think every blue screen is just sad. I love them. Especially yeah, when it's sure. when when it's not for my computer, I like them. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. If but it's for, not your computer, right? Yeah. yeah. For for an overclocker, how do you feel when you get a blue screen? Dan Cop, you're the, the you're you are the number one overclocker in the world right now. So how do you feel when you get a blue screen? Yeah, very bad. Especially when you have a very long, a very very long benchmark, and and it's just right before finishing, and then you get the blue screen. That's that's so annoying. Trust me. 
It's like being so close to the edge that it's not stable enough anymore. So as you can see, Clayton is um, going into 4.39 seconds. This will be uh, closing the gap with Joe 90 BR. At, that is at 4.35 seconds so far. This is a tight, tight, tight battle. And those guys didn't know what kind of CPU they would have just before the show. Clayton going back. And it's a blue ah, screen again. It's a blue screen. <laughs> I know that copyright. You're quite happy. It's been, uh, it's been almost a year. You're just waiting to, to say it's a blue screen on the live. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. I've heard you guys talking this uh, at, at AOC in Moscow. Um, and it was very loud in the entire hall. And, and, and you screamed it, and, and everybody was hearing it. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you, Jonas, Jonas Joe, for the follow here on our Twitch channels. Don't forget, guys, if you're not yet a fan of Overclocking TV on Twitch, that's the moment to go click that follow button. There's six minutes and 30 seconds left in this first round, opposing A. Schenk against Joe90BR, and they are competing to access the final that will decide who is going back home with the plane ticket to the final of the HWBOT World Series to be happening in December of this 2016 year. That was the BSOD from Schenkel just a minute ago. Didn't got time to change on the live. He's now back into uh, the BIOS. Some of the settings. During that time, as we say, there's just a few minutes left, less than six minutes now. And every time you reboot, you lose precious seconds, precious time for you to run the benchmark. Especially this benchmark is running at 4 seconds and 34 seconds for a Joe 90 BR. So think about that. If you take 1 minute and 30 seconds to reboot, your, op your, con your opponent can actually run multiple times the benchmark and improve his score. Oh, then is this a new lead? It's uh, not improving is a previous score so far. It was at okay. four point thirty-five. If you look at the score, A Shank is actually at four point three nine seconds, while Joan and TBR is at four point three four seconds. This is extremely close, and it's a blue screen again. Blue screen. This is quite common uh, when you are benching W Prime thirty-two M because you are pushing the system to the limit. Uh, during that time, A. Shanks is back in the BIOS, pushing that VCC in at 2.35 volts. What is the maximum you ever used, Danko? Using uh -huh. LM2, of course. Yeah, 2.5. And that uh, CPU two, is still alive? <laughs> uh, no, it's dead right now. But it, it, it was not the um, VCC, and it was, uh, I, uh, let's say, 150 sessions on cold. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So there's a lot of questions on the guys usually that, hey, but don't you burn your system when you do that? Nope, if you take your precautions, you can uh, make them run quite a few times. Especially if you're using liquid nitrogen, you cool down the CPU close to uh, minus 100 and even more. We'll be having some debrief about the temperature. I know that you guys want to know what is the temperature the guys are running at. They're running their 4770K right here. And they might be running it at minus 125 or something. There's a lot of... Uh, these guys are highly concentrated. Ah, there's a new lead. Oh, new lead at 4.27 from a Sheng. He's actually passing by Joe90BR now. And Joe90BR seems to have some issue because he had to reboot this system. He had to switch off the PSU, switch off the complete system and restart. This is actually quite uh, difficult to see and to do as well. I think we will have some information from our uh, correspondents right on the other side of the table. Hi, Tiala, can you hear hey, us? Of course. So what is going on on this competition for you? Oh, it's pretty busy actually. It's uh, even more exciting than I was hoping for. <laughs> it's uh, it's really tight. Uh, the, the guys are really pushing it really hard. There's a lot of blue screens like you could have seen. And there's also a lot of people actually watching here. It's crazy, 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 crazy. This so is 
we can see so the guys here that are highly concentrated. There is two minutes and 45 seconds left in this first round benching W Prime. So far, only Schenkel is back in the uh, the OS to do the benchmark. So let's see what happens. So actually, uh, truth man, temperature wise, so um, Clayton Schenkel is at uh, minus 100 degrees more or less at the moment. And let me see if I can see the temperature of our dear friend. What is the temperature, my friend? Huh? 81. Minus 81. Oh, they're actually um, other than I was expecting. I was expecting them to be uh, to minus 120. But that is maybe because they don't want to eat the cold bug. Yeah, for the moment, it seems only uh, Joe is hitting the cold bug. He's the only one we've seen so far using the torch. So I guess, uh, yeah, Clayton has a better better management on that or has had actually more time maybe to eventually uh, figure out where is, where is his breaking point. Let's switch back to uh, Joe 90 BR because Clayton just had a blue screen. He had to reboot, losing some precious seconds for that. And it's a blue screen right on the live from Joe 90 BR. Joe 90 BR sadly will have to restart and uh, lose some precious seconds as well. There's one minute and 30 seconds left in these competitions. This is getting quite tense, Dan Cup, isn't it? Yeah, it's very intense. Uh, I mean, that, that's the best competition if I, I've ever watched, really. Just amazing. This is, uh, this is going to be interesting to see what are the guys will choose uh, in the next round for the benchmark. So this is the last few minutes and ten seconds between Joe 9 TBR and Schenk, A S Schenk that are um, competing to access the final here of the HWBot World Series for the Extreme guys. The system froze, so you had to restart manually the the system. That will maybe uh, give advantage of uh, our French Joe 90 BR to go back and take the lead because so far a shank is at 4.274 seconds while Joe 90 BR is at 4.34 seconds this is what he have to improve his score against this is not better than his previous score 4.37 is not better than what he had before Joe 90 BR that you see on the screen now need to go below 4 seconds and 27 seconds Four seconds and 27. Otherwise, it will be second and will not access the grand final here at the Edge of Robot World Series for example. That's a blue screen. <laughs> and it's a blue screen. So you can see that the time the, uh, the other guy reboots. And this is over. This is the time is over. The time is over now. There is no more time. This is this is close. They cannot submit any more score. This is the end of uh, this first uh, round. You can see uh, Schenkel shaking hands, and John and are finishing the uh, the last few settings just just for the for the for the sake of finishing the benchmark. This is uh, this is well done. John and Tibera at lead lead completely the, the this this run and sadly at the end uh, Clayton managed to push his CPU even further uh, to uh, to the limits sadly we have to stay here in Brazil and Clayton is accessing the grand final but that is not the last run the last match for both of them because the winner of this the winner of this match, A. Shanks, is actually going to the grand final, while Joe 90 BR is actually to the bronze competition to define who will be the third person. The next match to happen is PHXX Paychex against Noms to know who will be affronting and con contesting against A. Shank. Dan Cop, what, what, what is your, your, your feedback from this first 30 minutes of competition right here at the Edge of Robot World Series? Uh, what a great live competition. I mean, it's so amazing. Uh, they, they are pushing the CPUs within 50 minutes almost to the max and then just playing around to get the last uh, seconds out of the benchmark. So uh, really, really great. I think, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see the other guys and, and at least the, the finals must be amazing. We'll, uh, we will see in the next uh, few uh, minutes uh, what the guys uh, did think about that one. You can see they are actually taking back their system back to uh, where they were benching. As we introduce you guys, they need to have to bring their own system right here 
um, they can use anything they want except the CPU that is provided to them, 4770K. This is to make sure they have equal chance of uh, of participating. They can they bring their own motherboard that is to be a Gigabyte motherboard because Gigabyte is an event partner. They have to use HyperX DDR3 memory that they can bring themselves or use the one uh, that is available here for the overclockers to use. And most importantly, they have to use the Seasonic PSU, the 760 watts. This is mostly because Seasonic is the uh, HWBot World Tour complete partner for the complete this year. Dankop, you are actually uh, sponsored by Seasonic, so can you tell us a little bit more about uh, this PSU in particular? Actually, did you try the 760 Platinum yet? Yes, or yes, I did. My, no, I'm, 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 for, for overclocking, I'm using the P1200. Um, but in my in my uh, daily computer, I'm using the uh, 760 watts, and yeah, it's it's a uh, quite good PSU. It's platinum, uh, and yeah, usually you can do everything with it, uh, like like with the P1200, because uh, if if you just overclock your CPU and your memories uh, without the GPU, then it's it's by far enough. And that is uh, interesting to see that Seasonic is a sponsor of this event and that some quality PSU will be used along of this. Just for uh, you guys, this is Joe90BR reheating his, uh, his system just to make sure that it can dry everything up. It is super humid here, not as much as in Taiwan, but it's still super humid. It is super hot as well. This is the summertime in Brazil and they have to make sure that they don't get um, condensation issue and water going on the board because that could damage the complete system so far. Dankop, that was awesome commenting this first game with you. There is the next game coming up between PHHX and Noms. I really need to find a way to say that name. PHX and Noms. And they will, we will know who access the grand final against Schenkel. The two losers from this semi-final will access the bronze uh, competition to uh, know who will be third and who will be fourth in this one. Each run is about 30 minutes and they can choose the benchmark in between a few of them. There is W Prime 32M, the one we just saw right now. There is memory clock, so the maximum memory frequency they can reach on their DDR3 memory uh, using HyperX memory. There is XTU score, there is GPU Pi 4 CPU 100M, 3D Mark 11 physics score, so that's only one part of the score, and Sidebench R11.5. So then Cup, um, we will find you back in the next few minutes. Just a time for everyone to uh, pack up their system. This is the last few uh, minutes for John NTBR in the front row for people to take picture with him and of him. And we will be coming back live here on Overclocking TV in the next uh, few minutes for the next game. So guys, stick around. We will have, if you have any questions, let us know on the live chat. And during that time, enjoy the music. <laughs> 